Hello YouTube, it's your girl Kimberly. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. In this video, I am going to talk about the best discount vacation destination. So let's say you want to go to a nice little trip, have some fun in the sun, but you don't want to spend a lot of money. These are the places you need to go. So if you want to know more, keep watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss out on any of the great videos I make here. Travel tips, tech beauty, makeup, hair, nails, just life, even food reviews. So if there's anything that you like here on the channel, hit the subscribe button. That way you can make sure that you catch it and you don't miss it. Also hit that notification bell. That way you'll be first to know when I post new videos. If you like this video, like the video. That way I'll know to make more videos like it. All right, so let's get into the list. So I have six places on the list. I was trying to do five, but could not narrow it down that much. So here we go so number six Mexico I think Mexico is super cool there's lots of different cities lots of different vibes if you are an American citizen we have like border crossing programs and just a established relationship with Mexico so it's a lot easier in terms of um, it's one of those countries similar to others where you don't need visas you don't need anything and there's so many different things to do if you're adventurous they have adventure stuff. If you're a spa girl, they have spa relaxing stuff. So no matter what you're trying to do, they have it in Mexico. And that's why I think it's a really great destination. They also have a lot of stuff for families, um, for small kids, medium kids, for, for teen clubs, all of that. So it's really affordable, um, especially with the exchange rate. Um, I went to Cancun. I got to go to a cenote. I had a really fun time there. And I think Mexico is so super cool. Um, a lot of people now are also going to Mexico City, different places and stuff. So Mexico is a super cool discount destination. Number five is Belize. I went to K Corker in Belize. I had a bucky good time. The issue, I would say not issue, but planning with Belize is that in Belize City, there's not really that much to do. So once you fly there, you need to make sure you're getting on a ferry to go to like one of the islands. So that way you can see like the different beaches and they have resorts and hotels and restaurants and stuff there where they do have some stuff in Belize City, but it's definitely smaller. And Belize City caters a lot to like cruise ships. So when the cruises come in, there's a lot of stuff. But if you happen to be there when there isn't any cruise ships and there's not like the little bazaar with all the people selling stuff, they kind of break all that down and they only set it up for cruise ships. So I would definitely say try to coordinate your trip to make sure that you land at the airport, have enough time to travel to the ferry and then go to where you're staying at one of the islands. Because if you don't coordinate that correctly, you might end up, you know, not being able to make a ferry and all that stuff um, and making sure you have a flight early enough so if the flight gets delayed you'll still make the last ferry so Belize is beautiful though absolutely gorgeous I had so much fun at Cape Walker Cape Walker is kind of like the more party spring breaker kind of island um, and um, I had a really good time really great food wonderful experience so that was number five number four is Colombia specifically Cartagena um, I went to Cartagena. I would say it's giving a little bit of like Miami vibes. It's a beachside town that has a lot of history and a really great nightlife, restaurants. Um, there, There is beach there. Um, really, really cute. Had a wonderful experience there. And then you could also, from Cartagena, travel out to other parts of Colombia to do like excursions and day trips. And I went to the National Park also when I was in Colombia. Um, we took a bus from Cartagena to go to the area with the National Park and did like a mini trip within our trip. So um, I had a really great time in Colombia. Phenomenal food. Some of the best fish soup I've eaten in my whole life. Um, but it was a really good experience and it was super, super affordable. So loved Colombia. Um, that was number four. Number three is Thailand. If you spend 10 seconds on Instagram travel people, you will see everybody talk about Thailand, Thailand, Thailand. And Thailand is a really great place. There are so many different types of cities. And you could go to Bangkok and see like more of the historical temples and stuff. Go to Phuket and get like more of the beach vibes. And um, I went to Bangkok and Pattaya, which was kind of like a beachy vegas -y kind of stuff. Like there were so many shows and clubs. But then it also was the beach. And then there were um, 
like a lot of happenings going on so it was a really cool experience um being from the united states i will say that once you start talking about asia it's a longer flight so you do have to kind of prepare um for those extensive flights and for some people the idea of 13 plus hours on a plane is not favorable so uh, i ended up going from new york to beijing and then beijing to bangkok so it was like a 13 hour flight and then a six hour flight so um super super long time on the plane and i definitely understand that's not for everybody however i would say ooh, if there's a country that's worth that long flight is thailand so um and i went back in 2015 there's a lot more like direct flights and stuff now but it was really really a cool experience um especially because thailand has like kind of a mix of a lot of different cultures um there's a lot of people from the west who live there um so much history with all the different temples and um, reading the placards, they have a lot of signs and stuff in English if you're trying to like learn what is this temple, what is the meaning of it. Um, it's really beautiful and gorgeous to see everything. And um, the people there help you in terms of like making sure you have the correct clothes if you want to walk in the temple and stuff. Um, I mean, you have to bring your own like coverings if you're wearing shorts or whatever. You need some long pants, put that in your bag real quick. But um, like you can't necessarily always buy it there but everybody was helpful in terms of explaining and if you didn't understand how it worked um that was really nice they also have some really great museums in bangkok that i loved um learned so much like about their history and um seeing the different buddha statues and going jewelry shopping there was a lot of stuff to do in bangkok and um thailand in general was really really cool so love thailand that is number three and like i said i loved it there but i did put it at three because that flight is long if you're coming from the united states so um i do know that could be a deal breaker for some people but me personally i would say it's worth it you know just try to do your training try to sleep on the plane different hacks for long flights try to do it it's worth it number two is costa rica i loved costa rica um a lot of times when you go on vacation places, it's more difficult to see natural wildlife, animals, how it originally was because of the virtue of tourism and that it can change these places sometimes. However, Costa Rica has managed to keep a lot of the natural aspect intact while also having the infrastructure and the setup for tourists to come visit. It was beautiful. I loved it. The food was great. The people were nice. The weather was beautiful. Um, I went to the black sand beaches. There was an iguana on my beach chair and I freaked out, but then it left and I was fine. Um, I had so much fun. And I actually went to Costa Rica on a solo trip. So a destination has to be a certain kind of pop in for you to be able to go by yourself and have a really good time. And I love that about Costa Rica. I had so much fun. Um, definitely i'm even thinking of going back like with a group of people who are like okay i had a good time by myself but like now y'all all need to go and experience costa rica the way i experienced it so um really good time really great price point um they have a lot of different activities in terms of if you want to be active and go hiking in the rainforest you could do that if you just want to go on like a restaurant kind of tour and see like the town and go to different places and learn historical things they have that um, weather was beautiful. I went in May or July. I will clarify that in the description box. Click down below to find out for sure. But, um, yeah, I loved Costa Rica when I went. It was so beautiful and I definitely want to go back. All right, that's number two. Number one is... Panama, I loved Panama. So I went to Panama City and I went to Boca del Toro and I visited quickly for like an hour Basta Mentos. And I don't speak Spanish, so I might have butchered all of those names except for Panama City. Um, my apologies. Uh, charge it to my head and not my heart. But Panama was so beautiful. Um, they had so many different 
even if you only get to go to Panama City, you can see so many different things just being there. There's the traditional um, tourist locations like the canal and the museums and the places that the double decker bus goes. But um, there's also so many cute, cool restaurants and shops and things that are just interesting even if you're just walking around Panama City. That being a New Yorker, it is very hard for someone's city to be impressive to me just walking around and seeing the things. Um, and for Panama City to do that, it was so cool. Um, and it's, it's pretty simple to get around there too, even if you don't speak Spanish. Um, really, really beautiful. At every place I went, I feel like I learned something. Like there's a lot of places on here where it's like, it's basically a good time, fun time trip. But Panama was a really great balance of like, I felt like I learned about the country and met everyday people. But then I also got to have good time, fun time and had that balance of like, not just vacation, but not just travel. Like I got both. And I really, really liked that about Panama. Um, the weather was beautiful, it was gorgeous. Um, I went in the springtime for Panama, I know that one for sure. Um, and it was amazing. Um, in terms of Boca del Toro, which is like a beachy kind of island community off of the main country of Panama, um, took a short flight there. It was beautiful. Um, that you could from there you can take boats to other islands and other places to go to really secluded beaches that are gorgeous top five beaches in the 30 countries I visit to visited Panama's in there and it was on one of these affordable trips that I was able to go and see it and experience it um I would say Red Frog Beach was my favorite Starfish Beach is a close second but um really 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 beautiful beaches and being able to access it affordably and have a good time it was so nice um and everybody was cool chill vibes although they had like a little music going and little drinks it wasn't overbearing over the top that you felt like ah this is too much so um i really loved love panama and it's funny i went with my sister we had a really good time and um, Panama was such an amazing experience that I'm absolutely going back. It's more of when and how am I going back versus if I'm going back. Like, love, love Panama. That is my number one. If you are going to do an affordable trip, I would say start your research with Panama. Um, also, I will preface this whole video by saying I was able to get deals based on where to stay, where hotels, with extensive research and trying to figure it out. So all these places do have affordable places, but they also have very high-end, expensive places. So make sure that you're clear about your budget, what you want, how long you want to stay, what you're looking for, where you're flying from. Also, leaving from New York, I know it's different from leaving from the West Coast, the Midwest, the South. Every airport kind of has different prices and setups. So what might be affordable at one airport might not be affordable at another airport. So definitely do your research about all these locations. But I will say I had a great time at all of them. They were all affordable. Um, I don't think that any of these trips were like, in terms of my trips where I'm like, ooh, that was a couple thousand. That was not one of these. Like, you can have a really amazing experience in these places and do it on a reasonable budget. So if you have any questions about these places or what I did, definitely look in the description box below. I have some blogs about some of them for my travel blog. So I'll leave those um, links there that we guys can peruse those. And if you have any questions that aren't answered there, just leave it in the comment section and I will jump in and respond, okay? So thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video and I'll see you next time. Bye.